Eyes Wide Shut. It is a hyper-sexual movie about a married couple who is trying to figure out how to be faithful to each other, which is not something I expected Kubrick to tackle. Most of his movies are similar to this, though. They're not obviously explicitly this movie, but a lot of his movies are these long, methodically paced, slow burn movies that have this really gut punch satisfactory ending. That's almost all of his movies. This is a great film regardless. It's a great looking movie to start off. The cinematography is gorgeous. The lighting, the long takes, the oneers, all are incredible. The opening shot of the movie is a really good encapsulation of how I feel about the movie as a whole. Because it opens with this incredible one take shot where Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman, who is gorgeous in this i i i couldn't take my eyes off of her she had me on my knees but it's this awesome one take where they're getting ready for this party which takes up a good chunk of the first act and it's following them as they're getting ready and right at the end of the one take which is so impressive and fun nicole kidman tries to get out of the bathroom and she has to do one of these to get past the camera and i went oh the seams showed just a bit and that's a good encapsulation of the film as a whole for me. It's so visually impressive. It's so impressive on many levels. In performance, cinematography, sound design, lighting, production design, costume design, dialogue, script writing. It's so impressive on so many levels. But then, there's just a hint of stink. Not bad. It's like you had a, a really airy fart. It came out kind of soft and quiet but it's there i'm ready the first half's incredible i think it's almost flawless filmmaking probably flawless as far as i can tell minus a couple of things like i mentioned like the nicole kidman thing just a couple seams loose here and there on this beautiful jacket there's like a little hair that's poking out you just have to rip off it's so great you have that opening scene which is great then you have the party scene, which goes on for 10, 15 minutes, and we learn all about these characters, and that's great. Tom Cruise is, like, schmoozing these two girls who want him to have a threesome with them, and they start pulling him away, and then he gets pulled away, so he doesn't do it. His wife, Nicole Kidman, is dancing with this hot, tall, white-haired, chiseled guy, and he keeps trying to get in her pants and she says no we learn a lot about these characters and how unfulfilled they are in their marriage which is a big topic of the film which we can talk about and that scene's great and people keep throwing themselves at tom cruise which was the funniest part of the movie it was literally like he goes to a place someone throws themselves at him he goes to a place someone throws themselves at him and he almost does it and then he doesn't or he says no and then he kind of wants it and then he doesn't it's like scene after scene of that in the first half which i loved i thought it was a lot of fun and i also thought it was really funny anytime he went somebody somewhere and he would flash his doctor's badge like it was a cop badge that was hilarious he's like you're gonna let me in they're like no we're not and he goes i'm a doctor you could tell by this doctor license i have in my wallet and they go We'll let you in anywhere you want. Hilarious. Every time it happened, it was funny. And it got funnier and funnier. You're going to show me everything I need to know. You're going to tell me about this person. I'm a doctor. It's crazy. And that's one thing that's weird about this movie for me. And that's Tom Cruise. Because I'm not sure who else could play this role, at least in 1999. Because this is exactly the person you should have in this role. Because they have to be somebody where it makes sense that someone would throw themselves at. Like Tom Cruise walking through a hallway, you're gonna double take. Wow, that's one of the most attractive, handsome men I've ever seen. However, he's not a good actor. And then they just took him off in a car. Do you have any idea where they went? No, not a clue. He has many scenes where he's getting absolutely destroyed by Nicole Kidman, and it's not even close 
Nicole Kidman is crushing him, acting circles around him. Almost everybody that he's next to does. There's one scene when a character is expositioning to him, and he, like, stands up with his face, his hands on his face, for way too long, and then he lets it slowly slide, and all I could think of was, man, he thought that was so badass. He's like, this is gonna be what I'm remembered for. This cool moment where I just have my, I'm in such disbelief, I can't think of my hand on my face and it slowly drips off. No, it looks stupid and corny. Don't, don't do that. But continuing on with the story sidetrack for Tom Cruise there, the story sort of falls off after the night of debauchery, the big orgy where a girl sacrifices herself for Tom Cruise, or at least he thinks she does. And then the back half of the movie is him playing detective, trying to figure out what this thing is, who these people are, what, and it's just not as interesting as that front half where everything felt as if it was spur of the moment. He's walking down the street and boom, a hooker's there. Oh, he goes into a jazz club. Boom, he knows somebody there. They tell him to go to this place. He goes to this place. It's like this nice pathway that the movie's following. Oh, he's going here, he's doing this, he's trying not, he's trying to avoid having sex with somebody, he's trying to avoid cheating on his wife, you know. And then the back half is mm, Detective Man. The back half is still good. Obviously, it's still a great looking movie. Obviously, there's some really fun stuff, but it also gets really exposition heavy, which I've never really loved. And it's something that Stanley Kubrick's always kind of steered away from. So that's kind of odd that this movie suddenly has a massive exposition dump near the end with one of his friends telling him basically everything about this secret society. And it's completely unnecessary. Yeah, I don't know. It's a weird one. It's, the, it's a very strange movie and there's huge, themes that it's playing with, like marriage, and trust, and sexuality, and sex in a marriage, and deceptiveness in marriage. That's one of the lines I wrote down while I was watching it, is that marriage requires deception as a necessity for it to continue, or something along those lines. It's, it's a very interesting and fascinating watch, especially because it is so sexual. That's the biggest part of the movie that shocked me. It is so sexual. From almost the first frame, it pulls no punches in showing you everything. There's like three or four shots very early on of just her ass, and then it would slowly pan up to her, her bare back, and she'd be putting on a bra, or she's sitting on the toilet peeing, and she wipes, stuff like that. It's, it's very sexual, and it, it, it doesn't care at all that it's kind of weird to put in a movie or possibly off-putting. It puts it in because it's kind of a raw part of marriage. Marriage as a whole is something you have to constantly work at and that's something that the movie is all about. And marriage is ever evolving. You have to go with the flow. It ebbs and flows. And once you find out that your partner has thoughts of being unfaithful, you have to take that into account. You have to think about it. You have to talk it out. And when you don't talk it out and you just kind of go out on a bender at night, you end up in places you probably shouldn't be talking or associating with people that don't have your best interests in mind. So that's the interesting part about the movie is that the, the undercurrents here are so strong too. It's just that back half where I feel like a lot of that kind of gets lost. The sexuality edge ebbs away, even though the last line of the movie is, ab is hilarious, it's fantastic. There is something very important that we need to do as soon as possible. What's that? I thoroughly enjoyed it. I will look forward to watching it again. I'm not sure it's my favorite of this series so far, but it, it's snugly in the middle. Upper middle, I would say. But now is the time to pick our next film, the next classic movie for next week. And to do so, I'm gonna go bowling. See you in a second. This week, we are choosing one of four movies to watch for next week's weekly classic movie night. On the far right, we have Yee Yee, a film by Edward Yang. Next to it is Up in the Air from the director of Juno, the movie of the year, the movie of the moment, beautiful. 
Next to it is The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, starring Clint Eastwood. And finally, in a pack that's unopened, a three DVD pack from Walmart, we'll be watching The Departed. Now, we're not going to watch all four of these movies, and I'm definitely not in my underwear here. We're going to prop this up here. What we're going to do is we're going to go bowling. I'm going to use a ball that happened to roll over here, this inflatable child's basketball, to bowl into the movies. Whatever's left standing wins. Okay, here we go. It's Yee Yee! We got one that's left standing! <laughs>